art nerds. Today, I'm going to ink this piece for Mermaid. But before I do, I wanted to show you guys just a few things, a few warm up -y things um, regarding inking with a brush that you might not be aware of. So today I'm going to be inking with acrylic ink. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to watercolor that mermaid. And I have here two different bottles of FW acrylic ink. I have black and I have Payne's gray. And I think I'm going with Payne's gray because it's gonna kind of match the underwater theme. It's gonna be a little muted, not quite as harsh. The materials you're going to need other than the piece you wanna ink and the piece I have was penciled on to uh, like Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. I wanted the tooth in the illustration and the tooth actually refers to the, the paper's texture. You can see it and I was trying to demonstrate that you can hear it as well. And that's just a cellulose based watercolor paper. It's not cotton rag, it's not anything fancy, but it's got a lot of tooth. And I really enjoyed inking on this paper when I did my 2016 Inktober's uh, Favorite Fictional Films. So it is a paper I enjoy inking on, even if it's not my favorite paper for watercolor. Now, acrylic inks are going to be waterproof when they're dry and they are a very liquid form of acrylic. So um, alcohol markers will actually dissolve the acrylic, the plasticizer in the acrylic and make it smear all over the place. So you don't wanna use acrylic inks with your Copic markers, but they're fine with watercolor. And I have this here in a dinky dip. And a dinky dip is something you can get through paper and ink arts. It's typically used by calligraphers, but I think every single comic artist who inks with a brush should buy the very cheap. You can buy the refill cups. You can fill them with your favorite inks. I have them in all sorts of colors. It's been a huge lifesaver. It sure beats inking out of the bottle or inking out of these to have us ink out of like film canisters or mini paint trays and some paint trays are better than others for sure but dinky dips are definitely the way to go and i have my Payne's gray already in a dinky dip i also have a cup of fairly clean water i was doing some testing as you guys can see and i highly recommend unless it's for ethical reasons you ink with a kolinsky sable brush when i was at scad they recommended that we use the windsor newton series 7. i recognize that that is out of budget for a lot of people now to be fair you're only going to need a couple of brushes for inking but it doesn't have to be series 7. there's actually a lot of good alternatives i'm going to be using the creative mark Rhapsody Kalinsky Sable. This is sold from Jury's Artorama. The size three is a brand new, I never, I just washed the sizing out of it, brand new Kalinsky Sable brush. Now, Kalinsky Sable is not a type of sable. It is a type of hair. It is hair from the very tip of a tail of a type of Russian mink. So um, I've been told it can be sourced ethically, but you know, companies sometimes lie, that kind of thing. I don't know. I can't prove that it can be sourced ethically. So if this is a problem for you, then don't go with natural hair fibers. Um, some people do ink with synthetic brushes. I've never liked it. I find they have too much snap. They don't have enough belly. They don't hold the ink well enough. So I have here a size zero, which I use for super fine details and a size three. And I usually ink with a size two or a size one, but I'm trying to get a little looser. And the illustration I have is fairly sizable. So I think I can get away with it. So I've got my dinky dip. I've got my cup of clean water. And I've got here a scratch piece of paper. And you're going to need this for a lot of different reasons. So we've got our dinky dip all settled. First off, you don't want to scrape your ink off back into the bottle because you are going to ruin the belly of your brush. You want to roll your brush and I'll zoom in so you guys can really see what I'm talking about. You want to roll your brush to remove the excess ink. You also may want to do some warm up flicking motions. In fact, I may need to clean out this ink container because it's being weird. It's sat for a while, it may have evaporated too much. And that's the thing that happens. Ink can turn, ink can go bad. Even acrylic inks will evaporate and it'll change the consistency. And ink is cheap enough that you can just dump a tiny pot like that and clean it out and start fresh. 
it's better to waste a little ink than to ruin your painting. So I'm gonna go do just that. So I'm really glad I dumped it out because there was like a solid mass of acrylic at the bottom that had settled out. So even though I shook it and stirred it, it wasn't enough. Another thing you're gonna wanna have handy is a paper towel, a napkin, something like that. And when we're working with acrylic inks, we need to either keep our brush wet, and by that I don't mean in the water, or we need to wash our brush immediately because since acrylic is a plasticizer, leaving it in the brush will ruin the brush basically and splay the bristles out. So if you're gonna use acrylic inks, which I really enjoy, then you need to know the proper precautions. Now, fortunately for me, these little FW acrylic ink bottles have a really handy spout or dropper rather, so you can get a nice fill without any spilling, which is always really good because I always seem to end up with the paint or the ink or the whatever all over my hands. And before you start inking, you're gonna wanna dip it in the water, remove the excess water. You can roll it on the paper. You can roll it on your paper towel and then dip it in your ink. That way you're not going dry brush straight into the ink. Yeah, that's gonna be much nicer. And there's a few warm up exercises you can do, but it is important to warm up. So either start your day doing some warm up drawings or do some inking warm ups. <laughs> And I'm a little out of practice when it comes to brush inking. I tend to have a really bad tendency of doing it like once or twice a year. I'll do it in Inktober and then not do it any other time. So this is a good opportunity for me to kind of wake up those old skills, get back into practice. So I hope you guys enjoyed that brief tutorial with some tips tips and tricks, can't talk today, tips and tricks for inking with a brush. And I hope you guys will check out my mermaid video. Bye guys.